All right, part two of the humanoid cabinet with the Queen Anne legs. I've got some uh, four quarter stock here that I'm breaking down. I'm going to uh, glue them together to make the bottom and the top of the humidor. Just uh, using the joiner to get the edges nice and square. And here I'm just marking for where I'm going to put the dominoes at. Dominoes probably weren't really necessary here, uh, but I've got it, so I might as well use it. Get the alignment right. Adds a little bit of structural strength. Some say it doesn't, some say it does. I think it does. So once I get all these uh, dominoes mortised out, go ahead and begin to glue up here. Place it in the clamps. Put some calls on there just to, even though with the dominoes it's lined up pretty good. I just have a habit of still using calls anyways. And uh, once the glue dries, I'm gonna go ahead and use the cross cut sled and um, get all the edges even. Take it over to the router table and um, on the top edge I did a slight round over and then on the bottom edge I came back with just a slight chamfer um, more or less just to break the edges yeah. it did look nice also but and now I'm gonna glue the top on and uh, as you can see, I, I put a board back there on the back, clamped it up there so I can use that to get it to where I need it to be. And I figured that was about the easiest way to do it. Clamping it down. Wiping out the squeeze out. <clears throat> And here's where I, I freehand drew the pattern for the queen hand legs on a half inch piece of plywood. And um, using my bandsaw to cut this out. And once I get it cut out, I'm gonna take it over to um, the uh, sanders, oscillating sander and um, whatever the other sander is called, the disc sander. <laughs> And this just basically got all the edges nice and smooth. And now I'm going to laminate some pieces of uh, Sapelli together to make some legs that are going to be about three and a half inches by three and a half inches. Um, by about 18, 18 and a half inches long. And once I get this laminated together, I'm gonna take the uh, pattern, trace it on, and then as you can see, you put it right there on the uh, corner together. And here's how this works. You're going to um, use your bandsaw to cut this out. And you're going to try to cut it out in as much of a solid piece as you can. Because you're going to come back and tape those pieces back. Flip it over and then cut the other side out. And the main reason why you have to tape those back on there is just mainly for uh, being able to keep the piece flat. I believe I was able to do this in three or four pieces and now like I said you tape them back on there 
And by the way, this is the first time I've ever done these Queen Anne legs. Um, I felt really great about how well they turned out. So the cut is going to come out fairly rough. Um, doing the legs again next time. I, well, for one, I need a better blade, blade but, uh, you know, it's my first time doing it. So, um, I will come back and, um, basically, uh, file and sand down to the line to get those legs nice and smooth. Right here, I believe I am um, cutting the wood for the door, I believe. And uh, now I'm just laying out to where I'm going to mortise. Uh, not, not mortise. Uh, I'm actually going to do a uh, sliding dovetail. And I take it back. I wasn't cutting the wood while ago for the door. I was cutting the wood for the um, aprons. And like I was saying, <clears throat> I'm going to cut um, dovetail slots on these. As you can see right here, I'm using a straight bit first just to hold most of it out. And then I'm going to come back right here with the dovetail. And then on the uh, apron, I'm going to stand them up so I can... Cut the uh, other end of the dovetail, the male end. And then I'm uh, just going to cut a little piece of this off. Because whenever you do the uh, dovetail on the uh, router, it does leave a round end. And this way it's going to go all the way in. Um, on this piece of the apron, I'm cutting these uh, semi-circles out here. And then I'll also do this again on the top uh, piece of the door. You'll see that in a few. And I'm just doing a round over on these aprons. Nothing crazy, just enough to break the edges. And now we're going to go ahead and glue up these uh, aprons onto the Queen Anne legs. And I'm just getting some glue into the, I guess you call the female part of the dovetail. And uh, using my mallet to get these down. I want to get them seated all the way in. And there's how it looks. And then I'm gonna use these uh, figure eight, uh, what are they called, the figure eight um, tabletop fasteners or whatever you wanna call them. Uh, I use my Forstner bit to kinda drill out this corner here. And uh, what these figure eights allow you to do is it, it allows for wood movement. Um, so once, if the wood begins to move, and that little piece that I hollowed out with the Forstner bit, it's going to give us some side to side movement there. And um, here I'm cutting out holes for leveler feet. And there again, just using the blue tape so I know how far to go down. And um, so I'm going to drill the hole. And then these particular level feet came with little plastic grommets, whatever you want to call them. And you just screw these down. I like to put leveling feet on pretty much any project I do just because everybody's floors are different. Not many of them are level. And um, here I just um, drew some lines, nice straight lines so I knew where to drill. Um, I probably went a little overboard. I put nine uh, screws in this and uh, I 
did not glue this down though just in case the client wanted to take this off and use that uh, bottom piece as an actual coffee table or whatnot um, I thought that was a you know just kind of thinking ahead type deal you know um, here I am um, taking some Spanish cedar and uh, squaring up the top this is going to be for the drawer And now I'm just going to run it through the planer to get it all of, uh, all three of those pieces down to the correct thickness. And um, I decided on this drawer I want to go ahead and do some half blind dovetails. Um, I've practiced dovetails a little bit. I've never done dovetails for a commission. Um, here I am using my gauge to uh, see how far down I need to... Um, scrap this line and this will be for the um the tails and i'm describing it all the way around and then on the actual uh front of the drawer i'm using a piece of uh sapelli and it's thicker you can't have it the same size as uh the other pieces since i'm doing a half blind um as you'll see in a moment, you'll see what I'm talking about. And here I'm just using a jig, uh, Cat Moses's uh, dovetail jig. Just helps me cut straight on the dovetails. And uh, I decided to go ahead and cut both the dovetails, at the, I mean both the tails sides at the same time. Um, there again, took a risk, but I'm glad I did. It saved some time and it made sure everything was the same. And now I'm just getting rid of the waste. And that Spanish suit is fairly soft, so this was really easy to get out. Didn't take much time at all. Just making sure I'm getting all the waste out of there and it's nice and flat. And now I'm using a marking knife to mark those tails onto the pin board. And as you can see, I've only got those tails halfway across the board. Um, Hence the half blind dovetails. Uh, you can only see the tails. You can't see the, uh, or how would you put that? Well, you can't see the, the tails come all the way through, I guess you can say. Um, here I am cutting out the uh, waist, just leaving the pins. And once again, like I said, that span shooter is really soft, so it was really easy to do. Um, I'm going to use a piece of mahogany ply as the drawer bottom. So here I'm just cutting a dado. And I ran them through. Uh, with the saw blade itself was an eighth of an inch then I came back moved it over a little bit because I needed about three sixteenths of an inch um, no I'm sorry not three sixteenths uh, I believe it was a quarter quarter of an inch and then um, since I did the half blind dovetails on the front of the drawer on the back I just did simple um, rabbits and uh i'll glue those and then um put um use my uh pin neller to secure them and here i'm just putting some glue in on the pin board putting the half blind dovetails in now i'm cutting the uh piece of plywood 
And you know what? I think it was three sixteenths, not a quarter inch. It was a uh, three sixteenths for the plywood. You know, I'm I'm doing this uh, voice over here, and this was probably done about two or three weeks ago. So I'm just kind of doing this shooting from the hip. Now here I am. I'm sliding in that piece of cord um, <laughs> plywood in, and uh, getting it seated down in there. And then I'm going to put a, um, after I glue this up right here, I'm going to drill a small hole um, through the plywood into the uh, backboard right here. And just use a small screw just to get it, um, hold it in place. This way, if the board ever breaks or whatnot, it can be replaced. And now I'm starting on the door. And this is going to be the top piece of the door. And there again, I did this to match the half circles on the apron. Once again, using the dominoes to put the door together. Now, uh, most humidors, um, usually the door has glass in it. Uh, this client did not want glass. He wanted it to be a solid panel. Um, so what I ended up doing is, I guess when you put glass in the back of the door, you can just cut a rabbit out and then you can put the, the glass in using a silicone caulking. And uh, with this, as you can see, um, I'm just doing the corners where the uh, the boards are held together with the clamps um, because I didn't want to do this all the way around with um, the clamps on. So I just did the parts that I had to do with it clamped up and then I took it back apart and then finished doing um, this groove here. And uh, doing the groove right here on these half circles was very nerve wracking because I was doing my best not to break those things. And here I am, um, eighth inch mahogany ply. And I'm gonna cut these to size. And then I'm going to laminate them together. And that will make it about a quarter inch thick. You want to use plenty of glue because um, when laminating this together, you want to make sure that every possible place you can get glue, you put glue on there. And then as you'll see in a second, you want to use a bunch of calls and a bunch of clamps because you want pressure over every square inch. You don't want any gaps. So you want to make sure you, like I said, you've got pressure everywhere. And now that I've got the panel glued up, now I can begin to glue up the door. And so I'm putting glue and dominoes in there. And uh, I, I put glue into the groove where the panel's going. Not a lot, just a, just a little bit. And I more or less just did this because I knew that I don't want to worry about no wood movement from the panel. And I didn't want it jiggling around or making any noise. So this is just gonna help keep it more solid. And um, here I am using the, ham, uh, the uh, mallet to get this panel down in there. Uh, I hate these glue ups, they're very nerve wracking. They rarely go like they're supposed to for me. But got them together and now I'm gonna get the clamps on there. 
And while that dries, um, I was just going to use like a little finger hoe here so the drawer can, you know, so you can pull the drawer in and out. And uh, once again, you want to go all the way, almost all the way in. And once the, the pin part of the, uh, the point part of the forstner comes out the other end, then, then you just kind of uh, go in there and, and kind of, uh, what you're trying to do is, is you want to cut enough of the board with the forstner bit so there's no tear out. And now I'm um, just rounding over on the door. And here I'm beginning to uh, put together the baskets um, for the uh, cigars. This is what you use to store your cigars while it's inside the humidor. Um, once again, this is Spanish cedar. And I'm just using glue and my, my pen nailer. And it's just a simple little <laughs> whatever you want to call that little basket. Um, these right here, I'm going to use those to um, as as braces, so I can have something to glue and pin nail the little cross members onto. And as you see, I'm pin nailing at an angle, and that way, the the I think they're three quarter inch uh, pin nails, and that keeps them from coming out the other end. And just tacking on one pin nail, I'm using a dowel as a spacer. Tack one pin on each side. And just a little bit of glue is all you really need. And these things came out really nice and solid and sturdy. The client, uh, he wanted three or four of these baskets in the humidor and I ended up being able to get uh, five of these into the humidor for him. So he was really happy with that. And now I'm just using the off cut from the sides of the baskets as you can see it matches the angle and I'm taking these dowels and I'm using them uh, to where I can where the, actual, the, ba the baskets will slide onto those um, since there was no shelves in this that was a little ideal that I came up with And just goes just like that. Now we're gonna start putting the hardware on. These are the hinges for the door. This was gonna have three hinges on it. And I use paste wax on these screws. It just helps them go into the holes a little easier. Um, Cause you know, these brass screws, they are, they are not very good. And uh, you can easily break them but that paste wax will actually help them it'll lube them up and they'll go into the hole a lot easier <laughs> and uh, if you can see right there uh, I made a mistake um, the three the hinge with the three holes is what was supposed to go on the door and the two holes go on the carcass. And uh, you can see that I did fix the mistake right there. And uh, you would never even know it. Um, using a two inch hole saw here, I've got a socket that I got. Um, it's got a, a one three prong um, 
plug and two USBs on it. This way he can plug his humidor inside and then the outside plug and plug into the wall and it makes it, you know, less clutter as far as the wires go. Um, using Rubio Monocoat, um, this color is was chosen uh, by my client. It is a uh, coral, coral red or, or something like that. Um, I wasn't too confident in the color that he chose, but as you can see here in a second, oh man, he, he chose right on. This really, the, the color was really, it surprised me. I didn't expect for this color to just pop like it did. So I'm just gonna start um, applying it. And you just use a little plastic scraper to move it all around. And then you use the white, <clears throat> the white um, scotch pad to kind of just uh, buff it into the wood. Make sure you're getting even coverage everywhere. And then once you get it all covered, after about 15 minutes or so, you come back and with a towel and get all the excess off. Great thing about the Rubio Monocoat is a little bit goes a long way. Now we're doing the bottom piece. And um, there again, just in case client wanted to take uh, the top part of the humidor off and use this as just a side, side table or something, I want to make sure that I got every um, nook and cranny. I want everything to be covered with the Rubio. So I've seen um, people say, you know, hey, can you use Rubio and stuff with curves and stuff like that? Uh, because they only see people using it on um, flat surfaces or whatnot i mean as you can see there's plenty of curves on this uh piece right here so yeah you definitely can Okay, now I'm drawing the hose for the handle for the door pull. Now I'm just measuring just to make sure I get this uh, straight up and down. And now I'm drawing a uh, starter hole for the lock using just a regular bit. I'm going to come back with a spade bit. Um, there again, same concept. Get the hole started. And now I can go to the other side since I drew the starter hole. And just kind of just, you know, breaking the wood. That way there's no tear out on the other side as this bit comes out. We got the lock in now. Turned out really good. Here's a few pictures. Client came over to the house and uh, needless to say, he loved it. He was very happy with it. Um, he was hugging it and hugging on it, loving on it. Uh, I was super happy. He was super happy. I, I was super happy that he was super happy. And uh, thanks again, everybody, for watching. Please share, comment, subscribe if you haven't. Thank you.